Um, we do ask staff to collaborate with us on our plans sometimes. I don't know anything about how or why it was put together, but I can reassure everyone um, that we don't have any plans of implementing it. Um, yeah, I think that's everything I have to say on that yeah. topic. Well, I, what you'll see here kind of over the next little bit, um, I'll kind of start showing you the path of kind of how this all happened. You're going <clears> to <throat> get a sense of kind of what what was kind of attempted here. I don't want to, I'm going to get through the budget meeting. I don't want to waste staff time. This is very uh, significant time. But I'll, I'm going to throw to Friday, September 2nd. I think certain individuals didn't know where to look. That's on our calendar if anyone wants to pull it up. Uh, meeting multi multicultural business programs, Broad Business School, MSU, LEAP, Smart Zone, and East Lansing. Discussion, diverse business ecosystem collaboration. Attendees from the Broad Business School, Chloe Barnes, Ed Tillett, Lauren H. Attendant from Leap, Tony Willis. Attendant from Smart Zone, Harrison Jones. Attendant from East Lansing, Ron Bacon, Adam Cummins, Tom Fahrenbach, George Lahanis, Elaine Hardy. Subjects. What I'm going to do, I'll get verification from the members who attended uh, this meeting and discussion of the subject matter. That's in, that's in, I think what Adam was attempting to do was encompassing this meeting. And you're, you're going to, there's quite a bit. You're, you're, you'll see this, how this unfolds down the road. I'm like, I'm ready to, I'm in a real mood on this one and I'm trying to be professional. Um, the subjects discussed uh, diverse business incubation and attraction, uh, minority business support and retention, inclusive economic development place-based economics and inclusion, business analytics, minority micro-enterprise, student retention post-grad, vibrancy. The work then engaged by the city of East Lansing um, for the Broad Business School and this team, and it's mentioned in, a, in another plan, and I'll kind of walk you through this, because I think what you saw through this FOIA process were people trying to cherry pick and kind of move things through, and I know it's caused some discomfort for the city, but just understand a lot of these documents were cherry picked and pulled completely out of context. Um, the city of East Lansing coming back, there was discussions around, you know, in new developments and square footage. This may still be being engaged in. This is the same group from the Multicultural Business School and Broad Business School that made many of these suggestions and alignments. Um, price per square foot, location, potential cost sharing, Smart zone funds, utilization of the tick for the organization out of the Broad Business School. Many of the things captured uh, in that document are laid out in that way. My asks, um, primarily, more cultural offerings and variety. I th hope the DDA is aware, since I stepped through the door, the question's been a, down, a dedicated downtown person. Anyone who knows me knows that's my, one of my top priorities and asks uh, for the city. Um, space for minority and graduate business incubation, part of retention. Written in the notes on paper before I even had this other stuff. This document was created by our community economic development administrator. It seems to capture uh, the elements of the proposals from the group that were put forward by the group in this meeting on the 8th, which it's on our calendar if someone chooses a FOIA. I don't think they knew where to look for it when they were suggested where to look for certain things. Um, uh, there was zero request for effectuation of this plan as written. Um, it never moved beyond the values and the proposals within, held within the plan that were synergized together from all the people who attended that meeting. And it's scary that if it was frightening, if it did incorporate some of those thoughts. That's kind of scary. And, how, and really, it's scary how easily it was to accept uh, that just a few individuals were attempting some type of massive coup. But you'll see it all here moving forward. <clears throat> Uh, it was stated uh, that the goals could be accomplished with the downtown teams plan. Um, the downtown teams plan, here's a, the, the header with support and guidance from city, this is still draft as well. This wasn't, none of this is stuff that's supposed to be coming to people or being sent out or any of, that. any of these things inside a plan that are in draft form or even discussion form are not typically things that people pull out uh, and hand over to people. The downtown teams plan, which I think was to support the DDA was where it seemed to all be heading. It was the only plan I'd ever seen for effectuation in any way, shape, or form with the support and guidance of the city council, downtown development authority, and downtown management board 
a multi-departmental team collaborating across disciplines to ensure a solid foundation of quality infrastructure, cleanliness, safety, and based upon a solid foundation of quality, blah, blah, blah. Okay. The strategies and focuses include expanded diversified tax base, inclusionary economic development, placemaking, vibrancy, branding and marketing. Remember the original part we were talking about, this is captured within this plan, the part where we were talking about these partners, the Broad Business School, the MSU partners. Entrepreneurship support, program and services in partnership, entrepreneurship support network, increase entrepreneurship across industries. These were direct conversations, tech, soft goods, et cetera especially aimed for inclusive economic development principles, including utilization of public space with a focus on supporting growth for entrepreneurs in East Lansing marketplace, creating opportunities for local people and activating public spaces. Examples, low cost kiosk and facilities for micro enterprise. And this is at the time considering the Valley Court Pavilion, utilization of the Valley Court Market Pavilion, business incubation and support of MSU, continued relationship and growth and uh, tenancy of the TIC and Innovation Center. Services focused intentionally on supporting clients of various race, racial, cultural, and identity groups. This is more, this had more legs than the other plan going forward. This is the only plan I'd ever saw for possible effectuation at any point, just so you know that moving forward. Um, I will say this, and I was going to kind of not say this. Um, I, at the time, we, I see several plans. I get plans all the time, particularly from CED at the time, the community development group, I wasn't aware of the deterioration of relationships inside of the planning department and CED to be aware that it was a threat or a problem that some that one of our people brought to us a plan or something for discussion. There's a lot to that. But I was beginning to feel it uh, in some other ways because there were some asks of council. Some of them came directly across this desk and I, I, can, I can almost directly point to um, the entry point of these issues at, um, I put it, I mark it as kind of October 1 uh, with the approach road closure uh, for more than vintage, which would have gone right over my radar, uh, I think was a no until more than vintage reached out. And I don't think council or anyone else was aware that the no had gone out for them, but they're, they're kids and they're so persistent um, that they kept pushing on their thing and that was kind of it but um the things i had asked for and I, I didn't know why these things weren't happening i'd ask probably at the beginning of this long-term plan for alfresco placemaking covering three to five years read out on the efficacy of alfresco and how to better measure it uh, denial of road closures culminating in the first annual Vintage Fest, October 1. What other road closures were denied? So we were, we've, we've been in meetings. We're, we're, I'm in all the meetings. We're sitting, we're with the Big Ten, we're with managers, and we're discussing placemaking and the importance of it to economic development. But, I, but it seems to be kind of jumping the rails and coming to me with, well, I ask for um, sidewalk, another one, sidewalk dining denials. Um, is the sidewalk thing your priority? Something was breaking down. Uh, across the communication. As for another pass at the food truck ordinance, I knew when the first one went through, it wasn't gonna be usable. I don't think we've had one utilization of that ordinance yet. Uh, more discussion around barriers to affordable housing, revisiting that discussion. Um, but like, as I said, I wasn't aware of the dynamics taking place and that people maybe weren't aligned on, on the goals going forward. <clears throat> and I'll release my notes into the record. Um, by next week. And then there's an actual downtown plan that captures all this with more you can read that I think was probably the closest to effectuation. And let's see where the program level activities, business attraction, business intelligence, business retention, business support activities, entrepreneurial support, and other things. This is about the closest thing I've seen to a plan that I thought might have come out of the out of planning. But I just want to want, I just want to clearly state just kind of my disappointment uh, in the, in the ability of some people to just kind of make some correlations and 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 some things like that. I'll assure you, um, as the person who sits in the seat, there's not a single person on this panel or really in the city, uh, including uh, the Elaine Hardys or the Randys or anyone. I've never been to any person in this room's house. 
just to avoid any appearance of impropriety. I don't, I don't hang out on the weekends with people who work in the city just for these exact reasons. I take this seat very seriously, um, but I do think uh, some things have occurred here among some people who do hang out uh, and do some things with each other on the weekends, and I'm very disappointed uh, with the clear, um, how clearly this was structured. This is, this is bad, and I, I, I'm, I'm tired of being the one that says it. If there's other members of the community that feel the same way, maybe just take a look at it. And look at it that way. But I'm gonna I gotta end kind of towards a positive here. I'm gonna follow the words of Kim Johnson um, from the budget session last week. Um, it just it stuck with me. Um, we will do DNI here in the city, we will have a diverse city, we will participate, and everyone will have an equal hand in our city. Uh, there are no covenants of power here that where you get to dictate and determine who sits in the seats of elected officers and um, just kind of wield power from <clears throat> from outside. It's not happening. Um, but let's make D and I who we are, not what we do. That's what Kim Johnson said last week from his seat when he was sitting there, and that's what we're going to do. It's, it's who we. It's what. Well, it's who we are. We owe it to the people who live here, and to the public. These. I, I know you've felt this feeling before. So these types of attacks represent the why. When you go to other communities and you see certain things um, in those communities and you go, this would be awesome in East Lansing. Everything you've ever seen in any other community, and I can tell you this in two years, was probably offered to East Lansing at one point or another or in some form or something like that. And some type of just in fightings and different things created the opportunity for them not to be here. So if you've ever, I, I've, I've seen it in two years, every form, fashion of anything you can probably think of has been brought forward to your city. And that's kind of all for now, um, but there's a lot more to be said here, and there's going to be a lot more. And we'll, what we'll do as a city, we'll bring forward our stuff with vetting uh, or in an organized fashion. It's very difficult to get out ahead of, of individuals with an agenda, um, but you'll see everything will come out in a clean format um, moving forward along with any documentation or anything like that, but just be assured um, there's certain individuals who benefit from, from this type of chaos. Um, and it's certainly not our city. Um, some of what's happening, I assume would never happen. And that's why you've never seen me disparage or anyone across this. I love this city too much. I wouldn't disparage a single person on staff, in staff, former, future, or anything here. And you'll never see it come out of my mouth. But I will always bring facts uh, to bear, and we'll move forward from there. But just know that um, the city's functioning. Our staff's attempting to function. Um, to the best of their ability, um, but these types of things and attacks and that kind of thing, that's when it's coordinated. And if you take a close look at it, we're going to take a close look at it. Some of the coordinate that I presume coordination through this. So we'll be talking more about this in the near future, but just know um, there's rationale behind everything that's done and there was no um, a, whatever this whole thing was. That's it for now. Thank you. All right.